A sailing dinghy will sail best if we pay attention to six simple essentials. In this training video, we'll show you what these are and what they mean to you as you sail along. You should first be familiar with the points of sailing that a dinghy can achieve, as these are directly linked to the six essentials. A good understanding of these six essentials will form the foundation of all your learning development and in time they'll become second nature. You should keep thinking about them at all times and as one changes there's a knock-on effect on the others. The essentials apply to all sailing craft whether they're single-handed or two-handed. Bad habits are easily formed when you learn so you should learn the best way to sail from the start. Briefly, the six essentials are wind awareness, sail setting, boat balance, boat trim, course sailed, and centerboard position. They're all equally important, so you must pay attention to all six as you go along to ensure effective sailing. So let's start with wind awareness. This is the only essential that is outside of the boat. Having an understanding of where the wind is blowing from is an essential skill to learn and forms the basis of everything that happens aboard. The wind is reasonably constant, but as your boat changes direction, you must always have a feel for what this means to the angle the wind is hitting your boat. To help you, you can use a masthead burgee, which will point towards the wind. Flags ashore are another indicator. Ripples on the water also blow from where the wind is coming from. A flapping sail works like a flag and will lie in the same direction that the wind is blowing. You will not be able to point your boat directly into the wind as the sails don't work if you do. The sails only start to work if you remain outside a zone which is at 45 degrees either side of where the wind is blowing from. This zone is called the no-go zone and you should keep out of this zone to keep sailing effectively. Familiarise yourself with where the no-go zone is by looking at where the wind is blowing from and judge 45 degrees either side. In addition to the wind direction, its strength is also important. You should keep a lookout for any stronger gusts of wind coming. These often appear as darker patches of water, so you must keep an eye out for these and be prepared. Now, let's look at sail setting. Sails are your engine accelerator and brake all in one. So having them incorrectly set is a bit like driving a car with an engine that's badly tuned. Your main control ropes are called sheets and adjusting these control sheets in or out adjusts the sail setting. You must constantly check and adjust your sails to keep them at the best angle relative to the wind. This is when the sail is not flapping at any point. In the case of a two-hander, you should release both sails until they start to flap. When you see this, pull them both back in a little until they stop flapping. This is the optimum position for the sails on that particular course. In the case of a single-hander, simply look for the front part of the mainsail to stop flapping. As you alter your course, you must repeat this exercise constantly to maintain a good and even airflow across the sail. When you want to sail towards the wind, turn your boat onto the close hauled position and find the edge of the no-go zone. Pull the control sheet so the boom is close to the centre line of the boat and pull the jib in hard if you're sailing a two-hander. When close hauled, you steer the boat to find the point where the sail starts to flap. Push the tiller slowly and gently towards the boom until the sail flaps and then pull it away from the boom until it stops flapping. So, keep the tiller movements small and keep probing the edge of the no-go zone in small amounts until you're confident that you're on the edge of the no-go zone. If sailing a single-hander, steer the boat to find the point where the front part of the mainsail just stops flapping. To help you here, you might have telltales. These are small strips, normally made of wool, and stuck to both sides of the sail, normally about six inches inside the front edge. You should aim to keep the telltales streaming evenly on both sides of the sail, like this. As you enter the no-go zone, the telltale on your side of the sail will lift, like this. And as you turn away from the wind too far, 
the outside telltale will flap. When you're close hauled or beating, this is the most likely sailing angle where you might become overpowered. With the sails pulled in closer to the centerline of the boat, there's a large sideways force which will try to tip the boat over. To counter this, when the gust hits, ease the main sheet a little. This will reduce the amount of power in the sail, which will reduce the tipping effect of the breeze. Let's look at the sail settings on two of the other points of sailing. These are beam reaching and a training run. On a beam reach, the boom should be at about 45 degrees to the side of the boat. And on a training run, it should almost be fully out. For a more detailed explanation of the sail settings on all points of sailing, watch our points of sailing video. Keep looking out for the flapping point of the sail. Let the sail out until it starts to flap and then pull it in slightly. There are a couple of other sail controls that you need to be aware of. The mainsail outhaul is the control that pulls the foot of the mainsail out along the boom and alters the amount of curve in the lower part of the sail. The best position for this control is to pull the outhaul tight so it looks like the picture on the left hand side of the frame. Another sail control is the kicking strap. The kicking strap can be configured to look like this or like this. The kicking strap function is to stop the boom from rising when the main sheet is released. This shot shows the kicking strap correctly tensioned. This shot shows the boom where the kicking strap is too loose. If your sail looks like this, the boat will be hard to control. Another sail control is the Cunningham or downhaul. This is a small piece of rope that loops through a reinforced hole about four inches above the boom at the mast end and ties back to the boom. And when tensioned, it creates a fold in the sail cloth just above the boom behind the mast. At this stage in your development, all you need to know is that the stronger the wind is, the more you pull it. Now, let's look at balance. You should be aiming to keep the boat flat at all times. This is easy to say, but hard to achieve. Fundamentally, sailboats sail best when they're flat in the water. When the boat is flat, the waterline shape is symmetrical. When the boat leans over, this shape becomes distorted. The result is that the boat will want to turn towards the wind. To keep sailing straight, you'll need to use the rudder, which creates drag and will slow you down. To help balance the boat, you can lean out using the toe straps to take your weight. If you're sailing a two-handed boat, try to work as a team, but be sure to use the toe straps. You should also be ready to release the main sheet slightly when you become overpowered by a gust of wind. By releasing the sail slightly, the front edge of the sail will flap, which reduces the power in the sail and helps you to balance the boat. The wind has a habit of wavering in direction and altering in strength as gusts of wind come and go. You must constantly move your weight in and out to balance the boat, which is great exercise. The next essential is boat trim. In simple terms, trim is the amount of fore and aft tilt on the boat. A common mistake when learning is to sit too far back in the boat and hold the tiller and not the tiller extension. You should practice using the tiller extension at all times, which also encourages you to sit forwards. If you sit too far back, the back of the boat, which is called the transom, goes below the water, which upsets the underwater shape of the boat and increases the amount of drag, which slows you down. The exception to this is when you're more advanced and sailing perhaps with a spinnaker. In this situation, the power of the wind lifts the nose of the boat clear of the water, leaving just the rear section of the boat in contact with the water. This is called planing and is sailing at its fastest. And to promote planing, you should move your weight back a little. The next factor is course. You need to aim to sail on the best or shortest course possible for your intended destination. It's very easy to get distracted and disorientated when sailing and not pay correct attention to where you're actually trying to sail to. Keep looking out of the boat to check you're still sailing to where you need to get to. 
Pick a landmark on the shore as your reference and adjust your steering to maintain a course to that point. The final essential is the amount of centreboard that you use. The centreboard is a large plate located in the middle of the boat that can either be slid up or down like this, or it pivots around a pin. The purpose of the centreboard is to stop the boat slipping sideways. Try for yourself to sail on a close hauled position with the sails pulled in and the centreboard fully down, and then lift the centreboard and see the effect. When close hauled, most of the energy from the wind will try to blow you sideways. As you turn away from the wind, this force moves more to push you forwards rather than sideways. This affects the amount of centreboard you need. Starting close hauled, the centreboard should be fully down. On a beam reach, it should be about halfway up. And on a training run, about three quarters up. So let's recap the six essentials. They are wind awareness, sail setting, boat balance, boat trim, course sailed, and centreboard. They are all related and interlinked. You must have an understanding of the wind awareness to help you identify which point of sailing you're on and then ensure that all the remaining essentials are in alignment to allow you to optimise your performance and maximise your enjoyment. Key learning points. Wind awareness. Understanding where the wind is blowing from is the basis of all activities afloat. Use burgees, flags, flapping sails or ripples on the water to tell you where the wind is coming from. Keep an eye on the water for gusts of wind and take appropriate action to prevent capsize by either balancing the boat or sail setting. The wind has a zone in which you can't sail. This is called the no-go zone and is about 45 degrees either side of where the wind is blowing from. Sail setting. If the sails are set too tight or too slack, the boat will slow down. For optimum speed, release the sail until it just starts to flap and then tighten it again until it just stops flapping. Boat balance. For optimum speed, your boat should be flat in the water. Use your weight to balance the boat and be prepared to release the main sheet to keep the boat flat. You may need to move your weight quickly if the wind suddenly gusts or stops suddenly. Boat trim. This is the amount of fore or aft tilt the boat has in the water. Make sure you use the tiller extension to control the rudder. This will ensure you sit in the correct place. Course sailed. Sail the shortest distance for your intended direction. Keep looking out of the boat to check you're still sailing where you need to get to. Centreboard. Starting close hauled, the centreboard should be fully down. On a beam reach, it should be about halfway up. And on a training run, about three quarters up. Next steps. Watch this video as many times as necessary to get a good understanding of what the six essentials are. Use the script or glossary accompanying this video to help you. Practice the six essentials. For example, try moving your position in the boat and experiencing the effect it has on your speed and direction. Practice using the tiller extension at all times. Try lowering and raising the centreboard on a close hauled point of sailing to experience the effect this has. 